All right, let's take a look at these quiz problems. Um, so the first one's pretty straightforward. This is just asking you to select the product of the following reaction. Uh, the only thing that's Q in here that's a little bit is something you might want to pay attention to, especially if it's on the quiz that we're actually giving you, which I'm just going to say it definitely is. Um, <laughs> select the product of the following reaction, but assume rearrangements are possible. So we're, we're kind of telling you that, yeah, you know, you're going to have a rearrangement down here. Um, oops, that is way too thick. Uh, let's try this one. There we go, that's good. All right, so assume rearrangements are so we're just going to look and try and figure out what the product's going to be here. So we've got HBr, we've got this bad leaving group, but we know that um, in HBr, uh, that bad leaving group can be converted to a good leaving group into secondary carbon. So it's going to pop off uh, and you're going to form a carbocation. So go look at the, the book. Um, let's see, where would you find this at? It's very similar to, it's just an SN1 mechanism really. It's very similar to if you had like OH as a leaving group or something. Um, but so you form the carbocation there and now I've got a hydrogen and that hydride can undergo a shift there and that puts, oops, that puts the carbocation in a different spot. So my hydrogen is, I'm not going to draw it explicitly, but you know my hydrogen is now over here somewhere. So it moved from uh, the carbon next door to that carbon. And then finally I can come in and bromide can come in and attack right there. And that gives me my product. Um, so one thing to note about this product, so this was this carbon. Let's go back and put some color in. That's that carbon. Which carbons was that? There we go. Um, yeah, so you'll notice that the the high the bromide is actually on the carbon that's beta to the, the original carbon that the leaving group is attached to. Um, and so when you come down and you look, you just want to look for the proper answer choices. Um, one thing to note about this is that this molecule that we formed is not chiral. So um, if we look at the orange carbon, which is the one that might look chiral, notice that it has two methyl groups on it. So that's, that's not a chiral molecule. So if it was chiral, it would be racemic, but it's not even chiral, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then when we come down to our answer choices, um, we see that the correct answer is going to be this one, you just kind of match it to it. But you know, since it's multiple choice, it's not a bad idea to kind of look through everything else on there. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to do that for every single problem on here, but we can do it for this one. Um, so no reaction, when would you expect no reaction? Uh, if you had a, instead of HBr, if this, if this was just Br minus, so if you didn't have the, the acid there, that would make it no reaction because this leaving group is really bad and you need to protonate it in order to uh, get it to leave. So that's not gonna work out for us. Um, so we know it's not that. If we look at these two answers, these are just kind of wonky, like, uh, and not only does it not have a rearrangement or anything, but like, uh, usually when you're doing these types of reactions, these type of nucleophilic substitution reactions, um, we're gonna expect to actually have the leaving group depart, and this one, the leaving group doesn't depart. It's like we've switched out, um, actually what it looks like you did there was like you switched out a hydrogen for a bromide and like that just doesn't happen. That's not, we're not going to see that happening. So um, so those don't make any sense. You don't have any leaving group departure. So like those are just nonsense answers. And really so what it comes down to is these two molecules. And so this this molecule, I mean, we know which one is the correct answer, but if we look at the other one, that one's not a completely crazy answer. Um, so that's what you would get if you had no rearrangement. It's just drawn in a different orientation. Just, you know, you just gotta be careful of that. It's not, um, when I say drawn in a different orientation, like notice that here the isopropyl group's off to the left and here it's over to the right. So it's kind of like you just flipped it over 180 degrees. Um, but yeah, what, how would you form this? So, uh, so I've got this. Uh, eventually that would get protonated in the mechanism and so that would just pop off at some point and then I would I would be back at this carbocation that I started with um, just like I saw up here uh, but instead of having the hydride shift this would imply that you had bromide come in uh, and just attacks right there and you'll see that I made a don't do that you want to draw it from the electrons not from the charge um, so it would go in and attack right there and that would be racemic because this 
is a chiral center right here. Um, that's a chiral center. Uh, but we know that doesn't happen because we have this beta branching. And the reason that it doesn't happen is because um, if you go back up to the top mechanism up here, by doing the hydride shift, you end up making a tertiary carbon. Whereas here in the, in the structure um, that we'd be looking at at both the bottom and the top, you're at a secondary carbon. So the hydride shift uh, gets rid of that. So, so even, if you, even if we hadn't told you it was a rearrangement, you should be looking for that because there's beta branching here and that's your cue. Um, so yeah, so that one's not completely unreasonable. That's what you would get out of an ordinary SN1 with, you would get that out of an SN1 um, if you had no rearrangement. No rearrange, what's a, rearrangement's a long word. All right, um, but yeah, so this ends up being our answer. Uh, and they've, you know, the, the answer's drawn out a little bit weird here just because they've given some 3D information about um, what's going on in that carbon atom, but it's really not necessary because it's not chiral. But it is, in fact, if you go back and compare this to uh, this, they are identical, okay? All right, so. Uh, yeah, that one's straightforward, at least in terms of the way the question is asked. Uh, yeah, rearrangements are a little bit tricky. Okay, so this one is a, this is kind of a new format, I think, for us. This one's asking us, what molecule, which molecule is an intermediate in the mechanism of the reaction? So you'll notice at the top here, there are no unknowns, at least in the overall reaction. They're not asking you for the starting material. They're not asking you for the reactant. They're not asking for the product. You're given all of those. And this is really typical for mechanism problems. It wasn't for substitution and elimination, but it is for the rest of the course and the second course, usually if you're asked a mechanism, you're given everything. You're given the reactants, you're given the reagents, you're given the product. They're at, what you're being asked is about the fundamental steps of the reaction. That's what the reaction mechanism is. Um, and so in this problem, because it's a multiple choice question, they can't ask you to kind of push arrows. They're saying, which molecule is an intermediate in the mechanism of the reaction? So they're just asking, um, you know, which of these molecules actually appear in the mechanism. So the, you know, the mechanism has all these sort of like fleeting uh, intermediates, these molecules that exist for a little while in the mechanism and then they get converted into product and they're just asking you which of those um, actually represents that. This is actually, should be, I'm pretty sure this is changed instead of your, um, it's the correct one inside of the, what I posted, so. Um, but that should be an OH right there. Okay, so yeah, so taking a look at the answers then. So which is a, which of the molecules is an intermediate in the mechanism of the reaction? So first off, this one, um, that one doesn't make any sense because we don't have any bromine. Uh, just to be clear, like I went in and changed that because there was a that was just like a typo, a chemical typo. Uh, but in the problem set that I posted, I think that's that's not an issue. Um, but that one's not that one's not right. That one's the easiest one to knock out. Um, and then we have to go through and kind of figure out these other ones. So if you can, you know, you, you kind of want to think about what the mechanism might be beforehand. So you notice your reagents here, you've got a polar uh, solvent. Um, it's, you know, it's a bad or a weak nucleophile. And you come over here and this is primary. Um, so primary, but weak nucleophile, uh, you know, what's going to happen here? This one's not super clear based on what we learned in substitution elimination, but we do specifically go over this mechanism in our alcohol lectures. Um, and so this is sort of a weird elimination reaction. It goes E2, but you don't have a strong base. Um, but usually, if you're in acid, no matter what, uh, the first thing that you're going to do is end up protonating something. Or usually what you end up doing is protonating something. And in this case, you protonate the alcohol. Um, OK, so now, uh, you know, it's like, well, maybe we should pop this off to get this, carbocation, don't do that. Why don't I form that carbocation? What's wrong with this? It's a primary carbocation. And we spent all that time in substitution elimination and um, I hope the one thing, I know that's easy, uh, or not easy, but you know, sometimes if you get really relying on those flow charts, um, you can kind of miss sort of the big picture there. And the big picture there is that you never form a primary carbocation. Um, and so yeah, so what actually happens here is a weak base comes in. Oops, let me drop the hydrogen there. Uh, 
The weak base comes in, kicks that hydrogen off, and kicks out the water molecule. And we just get an E2 elimination. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's the whole mechanism. So if you can draw out the mechanism confidently, you can just go through and search these molecules really quick. Um, but you know, since this is an instructional video, I'm kind of taking my time. But so yeah, so this one here on two, that's the one that we would form if it was going SN1. But we know that we don't form primary carbocations, so even before we even started drawing it, we probably could get rid of that one. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Uh, both of these. So this one is a secondary carbocation. We don't form any carbocations inside of our mechanism, so that's not right. I don't know. That one would imply like that you form the primary carbocation and there was some sort of shift or something. That's just there's no reason to think that's going to happen. Um, this looks really similar to, like we're looking at this, it looks kind of similar to this, like you both have protonated alcohols in there. Um, yeah, but this one is it's just on the wrong carbon. That one's on a secondary carbon, here we have a primary carbon, so not the right molecule either. So we can get rid of that one. And then finally, we come and look at this last one, and yeah, that is in fact this molecule here. Um, so I'm going to redraw it without all the arrows and stuff around it. And yeah, we see that this, I'm using that ugly orange color, let's go for green. Um, this and this are, are, are identical as far as we're concerned, right? Um, so, so answer five there is the correct answer. So I think on our quiz we actually have, you can see I actually there's a gap here where I've plotted out, but it says which is not an intermediate in the mechanism. Um, so it's the same exact analysis. But instead of looking for the one thing that does appear, you're looking for the one thing that does not appear. So just be careful of that on the actual quiz. But the question setup is, is really the, pretty similar uh, to this one, which is kind of asked. It's, it's just very slightly different. Just don't try not to get confused on that. OK. So these are, of all the types of questions to write for the quizzes, um, these are kind of the hardest ones to write and have them been reasonable, um, or like easily understood, I guess. Uh, but let's take a look at this one. So this is another one. This one's this is how we're kind of testing the multi-step syntheses. Um, the question says, for the following multi-step transformation, select the answer choice that corresponds to the best set of reagents. Missing a word there. Set of reagents that, in the order given, would best accomplish the transformation. Each step is separated by a small arrow in the answer choices. Um, so all they're asking, what they're asking for you to do here, the the way you should be looking at this this question, is each one of these sets of reagents is just being applied to in order to the material. So the first step would be I take HBr and light and apply it to the alkane. Um, this one doesn't make any sense because we don't actually, alkanes, right, what do they react with? We only know one reaction for alkanes and it's to take molecular bromine, which is this diatomic species, and use light. And that would give us this. But HBr and light, that does something with uh, actually, we don't know any reactions that involve hydrobromic acid, HBr, and light, right? We know HBr and peroxides for alkenes, but nothing with light. Um, okay, so that's that's a gift from the, uh, you know, if you have that on the exam, that's a gift from the teaching assistants because that means that this, and this, and this can immediately be eliminated from there. Um, and now we just have to choose from these other choices. Um, Arrow there. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, so yeah, so the other one's Br2 and light. We know that's going to be the first step. And so what's asking you to do here, we'd say, okay, well, Br2, I'm going to look at answer two now. Br2 in light, that's going to give me this. And then I'm going to take sodium amide. Oh, sorry, my handwriting is a mess. I'm going to take sodium amide. And that's going to give me this. Um, and then in my last step, so I'm, I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm following along. Step one is this, and then the second step, I'm adding sodium amide. So let me color code these guys. So I'm using this, that's what I'm doing here. And then for the second part, I'm taking this, and then we're applying this to it. Um, and then finally in the third step, it's saying we're taking H2 and this limner catalyst. And what does that give me? 
So you know, in this kind of absolute longest way to work this problem, this is a way to do it. You just take and you apply each set of reagents to the starting material. And what you want to see is if your product lines up with what the actual product is that you get. And, this, and here you see that it doesn't. Okay, H2, so you know, there's a way to get there from here, uh, from the alkene, um, but hydrogen gas is not the way to do it. That just takes you back to the alkene. So this would be a really silly synthesis. Um, so notice that this product, you know, I've drawn the hydrogens on it, but the product here is in fact identical to the starting material. Starting material is ethane, the product you get would be ethane, so it would be kind of like, I don't know, like cooking chicken and then making it raw again um, in terms of how like a recipe, it doesn't, it doesn't really, I don't know why you do that. Um, the net, the net effect is nothing. Sorry. So anyway, the point is that that's not a, that's not a reasonable answer. So we get rid of that one. I'm just going to put lines through them. That's no good. That's no good. That's no good. Okay. So now we're just looking at these other ones. So we've already kind of worked through this. Um, let me do it again. So I'm looking at question three. We've got the R2 in light. To make this, and then the next step. We take and we add sodium amide. That's going to give us the alkene. So again, we're kind of pushing towards what would be the product. Um, but in the last step, uh, we mess up. And for some reason, we put acid and H2O. And what we end up getting out of that is an alcohol. And when we take the alcohol and we compare it to here, we realize, OK, no, in fact, that's not correct. Um, OK, so that tells us that this is not the correct answer, but I'm going to leave the everything in place. So if we look at problem four, it's the same reagents. So we do Br2 in light, Br2 in light, and then sodium amide. Um, but in the last step here, we're going to use bromine, and that's actually going to get us to the appropriate product. And so if you watch the synthesis uh, videos that I made, you know that this is normally a step on the way to an alkyne. So this is one of those things that you should probably, even without looking at multiple choice answers, have some intuition of how to make from an alkane. You know that a dihalide is a stop on the way to an alkyne. And that's a really important uh, reaction, not just for this class, but also for like, you know, when you take OCHEM2, you got to kind of be able to whip those recipes out really fast. So, so anyway, so that's the way that these problems work. So just, um, there's definitely at least one of these, maybe two, I can't remember, on the exam. And you just want to make sure that uh, that you understand the process. So each each little arrow separates uh, a separate step in the in the uh, in the synthesis of the molecule. So step one is I take the starting material and treat it with HBr and light. I'm, I'm going to do the actual correct answer. Um, which one? Okay. Yeah, so the uh, appropriate answer here is, is answer four. That's the right answer. And the way to kind of read this is I take my starting material, and I put in bromine in light, and then that's my first step. I draw the result of the first step. Then in the second step, I take the reagents from the second step, and I apply them, and I draw the product of that, which is ethene. And then in the third step, I add molecular bromine. And that's how I know it's the right answer. So each of these, so I'm just being really clear on these because I feel like these are these are places where people might get under confused or whatever. Each of these steps here, one, two, three, they just correspond to the reagents above the arrow in the multi-step reaction uh, series that you're going to do to synthesize the molecule. So you want to draw the intermediates that you would get on the way to the product after each one that sort of informs you as to whether or not you're choosing the correct path or not. Um, and if you end up in a situation where it's not the correct path, then you know that that is not the correct answer. Let's have those problems work. Let's take